the adrenal cortex stress profile. This presentation provides you with basic information as it relates to the results of your adrenal cortex stress profile. Here are your objectives outlining what you can expect to learn. First, we must define key terms and review anatomy and physiology. So when we discuss the components of the profile, you will have understanding where and how we make cortisol, which is our fight flight hormone and what it impacts in your body. Explore the features and components of the adrenal cortex stress profile and its layout. Lastly, we will review common patterns, but as it relates to your specific findings and treatment, please speak with your primary care physician and do not attempt to self treat. The basics of anatomy, which is structure and organs, and physiology, the function of these organs, as it relates to the adrenal cortex stress profile. The HPA axis is how we secrete hormones from our adrenals, like cortisol. It is composed of three main structures. The H stands for hypothalamus, located within your brain. It sends a signal to your pituitary gland, which is the P for the HPA axis, which is another part of your brain. Lastly, the pituitary sends a different signal to your adrenal glands, and the adrenal gland secretes hormones, signals, and other substances. One of the signals the adrenals can produce is to tell the hypothalamus and the pituitary that we have enough hormones produced by the adrenals and to stop stimulating it. It's like a child telling their parent that they are full and are not in need of additional food, which causes the parent to stop feeding the child. This is called a negative feedback because the end organ or the adrenals or the child in our example is telling the controller, the parent or the brain to stop. But when that child becomes hungry again, the parent will cook food or the hypothalamus will send a signal to, to the pituitary and then to the adrenals. Let's look at the anatomy of the adrenals before we go into detail regarding what the signal from the brain can trigger. Your adrenals, yes, you have two of them, are located above your kidneys. It is a triangle shaped gland and a gland just means that it secretes or releases a certain chemical substance. There are two separate sections of your adrenal glands, the cortex or the outer layer and the medulla or the inner layer. For the adrenal cortex stress profile, we are going to focus on the adrenal cortex because this is where we make and secrete two hormones, cortisol and DHEA, that are both measured on this profile. Cortisol is an important hormone that affects almost every organ and tissue in your body. It plays many important roles, including regulating your body's stress response, control your body's use of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates or your macronutrients, suppresses or calms inflammation, regulates your blood pressure, balances your sugar levels in your body, and controls your sleep-wake cycle. Your body secretes cortisol in a specific pattern called a circadian rhythm, meaning it repeats itself every 24 hours. This pattern is controlled by your HPA axis. Cortisol peaks in the morning then declines to its lowest levels at night. During the course of the night, it gradually begins to increase, reaching its peak between 7 and 9 a.m., and the cycle continues. This rhythm is important for our health because it is linked with many functions, including repairing damaged cells. The problem arises when untreated chronic stress persists, the HPA axis can become dysregulated and impact the body in many ways. 
if your circadian rhythm controlled by your HPA axis is not operating ideally, your health can be negatively impacted. We can sometimes experience symptoms such as fatigue, sleep issues, weight gain, depression, GI complaints, and chronic pain. HPA axis dysfunction is associated with many conditions, including high blood pressure, heart disease, gastrointestinal and immune dysfunction, diabetes and metabolic syndrome, depression, chronic fatigue, and persistent pain. The other hormone we measure on the adrenal cortex stress profile is DHEA. It is also secreted by the adrenals in the cortex or the outer layer. It is considered an adrenal androgen hormone, meaning that it is produced in higher amounts in men versus women. Because it is secreted from the adrenals, just like cortisol, it is oftentimes linked with stress. DHEA has many functions, including making other sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen, keeping our bones strong and healthy, sleep, maintaining a healthy weight, and brain plus mood health. Now that we have a good foundation as it relates to the HPA axis and mainly cortisol and DHEA secreted from the cortex of the adrenals, let's review common patterns that we may see on the profile. This is a copy of the adrenal cortex stress profile. You see the cortisol circadian curve on the left and the bottom of the page we can see that the times each sample was taken reported by you and the reference range. This range is where we expect your cortisol values to fall within. It is comparing you to a healthy group of individuals. The right hand side of the page is the DHEA measurement. Ideally, we like this to fall within the green area of the color-coded reference range, and below that is the ratio of DHEA to cortisol, which we will discuss a little later on. Here we see an ideal circadian pattern. The cortisol curve peaks between 7 and 9 a.m., and it declines throughout the rest of the day, hitting its lowest point at night. Ideally, your levels represented with the black diamonds should fall within the green portion of the diagram. If it falls in the yellow portions, it is not optimal, either low or high. If within the red or white areas, your values are outside the expected range for optimal health. Here is a cortisol pattern caused by acute stress or a perceived challenge. Stress is more than being stuck in traffic or a work disagreement. Acute stress can come from exercise, low blood sugar, receiving bad news, pain, toxic exposures, even a stressful event. The stress causes your hypothalamus and pituitary to signal your adrenals to produce more cortisol or your stress hormone, generating a fight or flight response so you can respond to the stressor appropriately. This is a normal and expected response. Figuring the reason for stress and resolving it is the ultimate goal to help renormalize your cortisol production. Sometimes the source of stress is not obvious and your healthcare practitioner will need to run additional testing to help identify the cause. When your acute stress is prolonged because it is untreated, it becomes chronic stress. Your body is still secreting high amounts of cortisol, but your cells begin to get numb or deaf to these messages. And this can result in fatigue, poor immune health, depression, and other symptoms of HPA axis dysfunction. Here is a pattern of low cortisol production. This happens after your cells become numb to cortisol and your ability to secrete this hormone begins to decline. An example is post-traumatic stress disorder we oftentimes associate with veterans. Because of war trauma, they are always on constant alert and loud noises, for example, causes reactions that seem unproportioned to the event. This constant state of being alert eventually leads to persistent fatigue and mood changes. In addition, it is associated with heart disease, immune dysregulation, memory issues, and other chronic problems. DHEA is an anabolic 
adrenal hormone produced by the adrenals in higher amounts in men compared to women. With low DHEA, it can be due to aging, stress, or a low-calorie diet. We may experience mood changes, decreased muscle and bone mass, pain, lower sex drive, dry skin, poor memory, or problems with weight loss. High DHEA can be due to stress, PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome seen in women, and other health conditions. With an elevation or low levels, you should consult with your healthcare practitioner for further testing or evaluation. The DHEA to cortisol ratio compares DHEA, which is anabolic, or it builds tissues, to cortisol, which is catabolic, or breaks down tissues. A higher ratio means that you are dominant in DHEA compared to cortisol, while a low ratio, what we typically see, means that you are dominant in cortisol compared to DHEA. You may be wondering what to do if you are showing signs of HPA axis dysfunction. So here are a few nutrients to consider to support your adrenals. Your adrenal glands are rich in vitamin C, which is used to produce all the adrenal hormones, including cortisol. B vitamins converts food into energy in your body. And when you are under acute or chronic stress, you have to work overtime to make energy and you use up your B vitamins quickly. By using B vitamins, you can help to make sure you have enough of this nutrient to keep making energy, especially vitamin B5, which can also be used to make cortisol. Magnesium is also needed for energy production and used up quickly with acute or chronic adrenal stress, just like B vitamins. In addition, magnesium has a calming effect on the nervous system and can help you to relax. Fish oil or your omega-3 fatty acids helps you to respond to mental stress in a healthy way because it supports healthy communication between cells in your body. Other adrenal support measures include yoga or meditation, getting high quality sleep every night, decreased use of electronics, limit caffeine, eat balanced and healthy meals daily, limit stress and stressful thinking patterns, exercise regularly, maintain healthy relationships. I want to thank you for your time and attention. If you have questions about treatment or interpretation of your results, please consult with your healthcare practitioner. If you do not have a healthcare practitioner, you can find one through your insurance company or using our website. Under the patient portal, select the option to find a doctor. Again, thank you.